Hi everybody, this is year 2020 and I thought that I could help people out by giving lost and found pet tips. Pardon the writing on the screen. It's the only thing I could do. So, as part of the 2020 year, I would like to help the general public out with helping lost and found pets. In just America alone, every seven seconds, a pet goes missing. And unfortunately, we in the United States don't have at this point one central database where we can post our found or missing pets. So unfortunately, we have this vast internet where we have so many websites that are dedicated to lost and found pets, but not one centralized database. So it makes it very confusing and very hard for people to find their pet because nowadays people are not directly taking animals to shelters anymore for stray holds. A lot of citizens have decided to take it upon themselves to hold an animal and try and find the owners, which I think is a wonderful and fabulous thing if done correctly. Um, so today my hopes are that I can give people the tools and information to either one, help them find their pet, two, people who have found a pet to try and reunite it with the owner. Um, I'm going to give you lots of tips, lots of information, and I do apologize that this video may seem very long. And I apologize if I start to fumble with my words um, and not make a whole lot of sense. I am very nervous, um, so I apologize right now. This is not something that I do. I never make videos and post them on social media sites whatsoever. But my hopes is that people will share this video, that we get to the point where we are changing the way we are thinking and the way we are handling lost and found posts. Um, and hopefully that we can reunite more owners with their pets. And hopefully, eventually, we have educated enough people um, in the United States that this becomes a more happier thing than normal. Um, and I mean the normal as in right now. Um, we live in a society where too many people are thinking that animals are disposable, which is extremely sad and frustrating to somebody like myself who has worked with animals um, and love animals very much. So the first thing I'm going to get on to is anybody who is on Facebook will know that there is a lot of different various of groups and pages on there. Um, several of them are dedicated to helping lost and found pets be reunited. Um, the only problem is, is that I find with a lot of groups on like Facebook, um, some of them are closed groups, some of them are private groups. And in those groups, um, it makes it difficult to share posts. And Facebook is constantly changing its algorithm. So depending on the device that you're on, makes it even more complicated. Um, I run several, uh, three actually, groups that are dedicated to lost and found pets. Um, Clinton County, Brown County, Butler County. Then I also help run a page dedicated to lost and found pets, and that is Blanchester, Ohio. Um, in my groups and in my page that I help run, um, I have under the photo section, if you go to albums, you will find several different albums. One of them is for found, one of them is for lost, and the other one is um, just miscellaneous information. Those are tips to help people find um, and reunite pets. Uh, the first thing I want to say is time of, is of the essence. Um, as soon as you notice your pet is missing, getting it out there is the most important thing you can do because you can notice your pet's been missing and say last time you saw them was three hours ago. 
Um, so the faster you react and getting the information out there, the better chances you have. Um, um, unfortunately, social media can do great wonders, but it also takes time for people to share and the word to spread. There are people out there that can make a post and within hours, it's like gone viral. They've had over 100,000 shares. Some people can make a post and nobody shares it. I cannot explain this, why people are more compelled to share one post versus the other. I, it, I, I, I can't explain. So the first thing I want to say is if you have lost or found a pet, please contact your local law enforcement. Let them know um, by filing, and I mean really filing, either a found pet report or a lost pet report. These are two different reports that need to be filed. Um, some law enforcement will take flyers, and if you can make up a flyer with a photo of your pet, that's great. Um, description, age, sex, whether they're microchipped or not. Those, those are really important information. Um, to those who have lost a pet, I see this all over social media, especially with cats. People will tell you to put out their litter box. In all, it is a great idea. I'm not bashing it at all. But here is why I do not like this. One, if you live in the city, you have a community cat. Community cats are very much uh, habitual, which means that they run, um, they have the same habits every day. They have this routine that they do certain properties that they walk around, mark, if they're not fixed, um, whatnot. So by putting your litter box outside on your porch, you have now invited this either feral, semi-feral, or friendly cat that has been free roaming in your community that you know nothing about um, for God knows how long. Could have been your neighbor that threw them out. Who knows? Um, these animals have been out in a while. Um, my point being is you put it out, these cats now smell your cat. They know what your cat smells like. They know if their cat has any medical issues, if it's healthy. Um, these animals are territorial. So the first thing is, is they're going to go try and find your animal. And chances are, um, if your cat is front declawed, um, they've lost their chances of defending themselves. Um, second all is they're probably going to chase your cat off your property. Cats that are generally indoor animals, and the only time they've been outside is when you put them in a cat carrier to transport them to the car, the car to the bed, or wherever. Um, they have no idea where they're at. They're scared. They're terrified. They're in survival mode. So please don't put your um, litter boxes outside. Um, I recommend more than anything for you whether it's a dog or a cat, to please put your dirty laundry outside. And I, I know it's difficult, and depending on the weather, it, it can affect everything. Um, but try and put your, so say here's your house. Imagine a wheel around your house, and then you've got these little spokes. So imagine a wagon wheelbarrow, and lay a scent trail out. For your animal okay that gives them the set center of these boundaries of this is where you live this is where I'm at so they'll try to stay within that proximity of your property especially more for cats dogs tend to roam they're like oh I'm out I smell this I smell this their their attention spans are really short and not to knock dogs they're just like ADH people um, and I suffer from ADHD so I, I get it um, so don't put your litter boxes outside, put dirty clothes outside. Try to protect them as much as possible. If that means you get a Tupperware container and you put a lid on it and you cut out a hole and you just put some of your dirty sheets or your pillowcase or some dirty clothes that you can put in there and they're protected from the elements, great. That also gives your chance, a, um, your cat, a place to hide in safety with your sense of smell that gives them a sense of security um so moving on um also notifying your um dog warden 
your um, shelters, your veterinarian. Um, so notifying all the correct authorities. Um, and when I say your local law enforcement, please do the non-emergency line. Um, or you can go down to your local police department and give them a flyer. Um, but just can, just get the word out. Those are the most important people. Once you have created a lost flyer, you can also um, give these flyers to school bus drivers, your mailman, your pizza delivery person. Um, God, you can give them your, your even your warden, your vets, your your shelters, um, community bulletin boards. Um, you know, uh, make posts on Craigslist in your local newspaper in which the animal went missing um, in the lost and found section. Um, some newspapers charge, some do not. So you'll have to check and see. Also, um, it is also important to when you put your pet out on these websites like Paul Boo's Helping Lost Pets, um, Pet FBI, check your emails often, please. I, I cannot stress that enough. Also, second of all, change your voicemail. Change your voicemail to say something like this. Um, so you'll want to say to the person that's calling you. So you, your voicemail should sound something like this. If you're calling about our lost cat, Fluffy, thank you. We need the date, time, street, and the nearest cross street or an exact location you saw her. Uh, we would appreciate it if you would leave your phone number. Thank you. Um, this is more inclined to let people leave a message. Um, I don't want to leave a message for somebody that's just like, hey, leave a message. Or that doesn't even bother to set up your inbox. Which is important. Set up your inbox on your phone if you have not and you've lost a pet. Also, it's important to contact your microchip company um, and let them know and make sure that, you know, one, report your pet missing. Um, two, it's also important that you do so so that... Um, you can make sure that your microchip information is correct. Um, one of the several big reasons why pets go unclaimed by their owners is some households do not have internet access or cell phones. Um, they may be elderly and may not be on social media. They may be elderly or disabled and may have transportation issues. Owners may have no idea where rescues or shelter services are in their area uh, or how to contact them. Language could be a barrier. It can also hinder the owner's ability to access help that they need. Um, also, many owners do not know about the microchip. Um, so with a microchip, believe it or not, um, two of the most common reasons owners didn't uh, register their chips and their pets is one, they didn't know it was necessary. Two, they thought it would cost. So let me break this down for the misconception of microchips. One, microchips are not a GPS device. You will not be able to find your pet that way. Um, two, they do not cost money to register. Once you have purchased your, your microchip and it has been inserted by a proper person, whether you're a veterinarian or a low-cost wellness clinic or whoever, you've already paid your lifetime fee on that microchip. Now, places like Home Again, who a lot of veterinarians use, these places will send out a bill to you. That bill is not for the microchip at all. It actually is for other services. So, please understand that it is required once you get your pet microchip, the information that they give you, you get online, create an account, and register your pet and make sure all your information is current. 
It is extremely important to save your login information, your pet's microchip number, all those things in a safe place, whether it's a safe, a filing cabinet, and a specific folder designated to your animal someplace. Um, also make copies for trusted family members in case you pass away or something um, and that they know where it is. Um, too many pet owners don't know their chips. Um, pets are more likely to be returned home if they're microchip. Cats are 20 times more likely to be returned home. Two and a half dog time dog ugh, sorry two and a half times more for dogs 57 percent of pet owners are confused about how microchips work we have to change this statistic one in three people don't know where their chips is registered or to who and if their information is correct. 44% of pets are not microchipped. Come on, people. <sighs> Microchip help. 100% free. 100% free. www microchiphelp.com again microchiphelp.com okay that is free microchip help one last time okay right here at the top of the screen www.microchiphelp.com that is 100% free microchip help so we've already talked about microchip, the statistics, changing your voicemail. Also, um, checking emails, making your chip, make sure your chip is current, the information. Um, also, I just want to talk about with people um, going door to door, knocking on your neighbor's doors, making sure, you know, that they're aware that your pet's missing. At night, it's also great if you can go out with your flashlight and just kind of look for glare of your pet's reflection from their eyes. Um, look high for um, the um, in the trees and things like that for the reflection from the flashlight. Also look down low uh, under sheds, porches, uh, even under cars and driveway in your driveway, things like that. Also, if you have a cat to make sure that, you know, your cat is not accidentally locked in someplace. Um, and depending if your cat is an indoor outdoor cat and if they're missing in home territory, then you need to check for accidental lock-ins, closets, cupboards, sheds, garages, things like that. Search your territory for accidental lock-in, you know, talk to your neighbors, RVs, sheds, garages, things like that. Notify your neighbors with the photo and contact information. Again, check trees for high spots using flashlight for eye shine. Post to all online sites, local classifieds. Alert your microchip company and verify contact information is correct. Record your cat is lost at shelters, clinics, and animal control. Also with your local law enforcement as well. Um, I also recommend people visit your local shelters every three days because shelters are only required at the minimum to place a stray hold for three days and then they can adopt or euthanize the animal. And if you cannot make it, please send somebody in your place to check. Also, remember that when you are checking shelters and things like that, that there is a possibility that you may not recognize your pet. Um, it's known as a mismatch. Um, just as a lost dog behaves different when on the run, he may act differently in the shelter. The unfamiliar sounds and sights of the shelters are very stressful. If you have, if your shy dog um, lost them in your loving care, the stress of the kennel may bring them back 
to being unsure and frightened pet that you originally adopted. Your pet may not respond to you like he does at home. Don't rush when looking at the dogs that could be a match for your missing pet. Also, the same thing applies for cats, okay? Take all the time you need. Um, also, when you are searching on social media sites for photographs of your pets, please remember um, that lighting affects the color of your pet's fur. So, an example, if you take a picture of your pet inside your home with just a regular light bulb, it's called a Tungsten, versus a fluorescent lighting, you will see that there are a difference between the colors of your pet's fur. Also, um, compare that to a photograph that you've taken of your pet outside in a bright sunny day and compare it to the photograph of your pet under clouds. This really dramatically can affect the coloration of your pet's fur um, in photographs. So when you are looking online and you are comparing photographs of your pets, please make sure that you are looking for very distinctive patterns, marks, things like that. If you're unsure, the pet may be yours. It is always, and I, I tell people, please go in person. Just, just go in person. Um, photographs can be very deceiving. Also, people who find pets, please do not sit there and go, I'm afraid that this animal may be um, used as bait or whatever. You are in possession of that animal. You are responsible for that animal, and I totally understand why you want to be careful. But here's the thing. Most people are looking on the internet and trying to match photographs of the animal that is missing to the animal that you have found. You can request proof of ownership. That means for a dog, dog license, vet records, adoption papers, um, pure bed, um, paperwork from the AKC, cats, photographs. You can request photographs even for dogs. You can request adoption paperwork. You can adopt, um, even for dogs and cats, you can use the microchip information that you may have. Um, say you scanned an animal, it does have a microchip, but the information was never updated. Well, guess what? Joe Blow down the street saw that your post on the local community site and was like, that's my cat. And yeah, he's microchip, but it's not updated or whatever they can prove if they if if they kept the paperwork with the microchip information the number that that is their cat vet records will show that it was microchipped um, the vets are even required to keep the microchip information as well so um, you can request proof of you know ownership owners be prepared to provide this proof as well um, don't be upset when people say, hey, you need to prove that this animal is yours. Um, they're trying to protect your animal as best as possible. So be understanding and compassionate about that. And people who find animals, please be understanding and compassionate about it as well. If somebody can provide you with a crap ton of pictures of the animal and it clearly shows that it's their pet, please give it to them. Um, people who find pets... Please give owners plenty of time to find their pets. Please realize that depending on the type of animal and the breed that that animal is, they can travel miles away from home. So um, when you're posting information, um, make sure you spread out to surrounding counties as well because pets do not recognize boundaries. They do not recognize um, Clinton County versus Claremont County and Warren County they, they just they don't they don't understand that so um, please keep that in mind and spread out your information even with the shelters and the local law enforcement as well reach out to them as well so surrounding counties as well sometimes trusted people like family friends um, pet sitters will take animals and dump them neighbors have been known to trap cats um, because they hate cats and they will drive them out of the county and dump them somewhere else. Um, so please keep in mind that it may be very difficult for somebody to find their pet. So please do not do this three-day stray hold. You are required to hold the animal for 14 days. 
you are required to make all efforts to try and find the owner. That means through local law enforcement, shelters, dog wardens to notify them that you are keeping the animal, you are fostering the animal, you are going to make every effort known. That way, if the owner calls these places, they can be directed to you to verify whether that animal that you found is theirs. Um, it is also important to try to make a Craigslist posting. Um, some people will look on Craigslist. Also, the local paper in which the animal was found. Okay, don't don't transport an animal from, say, Claremont County to Butler County and only put an ad in the Butler County paper. It needs to go in the county in which the animal was found and in the local city. A lot of local um, cities will have their own nose, newspaper. Nose, nose, yeah, nose, newspaper. So it is extremely important that you, you know, you do the right thing. Um, and please give these people time. Most people are going to go to a shelter and try and find their animal. If it's not there, they may be lost to where to look. Okay. Um, again, some people are just not members of social media sites. So you have to make all efforts. Please, I cannot stress this enough. Check your emails often. Check your phone, your voicemails, things like that. People who find or spot an animal, um, do not hesitate to call, to text, to email. We have these wonderful devices in our hands all day long. If you see a flyer, take a picture because you're not going to be able to remember later where you saw that animal and you think it might be somebody, you know, it, have it on your wonderful device, back it up on the cloud, share it on immediately, share it on your social media page. Um, those who are sharing lost and found pets, I highly recommend that you please create a post on your own page first, especially on Facebook. Make sure that it is for public and make sure your settings are set so people who are not your friends can comment on your post, okay? Um, it's extremely important that when you post on social media that you are checking your other inbox, especially on Facebook, for messages. The possible owner or somebody who may oh know the owner are, might be trying to reach out to you. So it's important that you do that, okay? Um, from once you've made that post on your Facebook page, share it to groups. Um, it, that way, if it happens to be in a group and people go, well, I can't share this, tell them it's on your page and to share from there. Um, also, people remember when you are reading and seeing these posts on Facebook, make sure you read the top. It, it'll say so-and-so shared, shared this post. That shared means that that original post that the person created, their name's going to be at the bottom and their information's going to be at the bottom, depending on the type of device that you're looking from. Sometimes it may be at the top and it'll show a picture of Joe Blow and Jane Smith and the information in a photo. Again, it just depends on the social media platform and the device that you're using. Um, click on the original photo. You can comment there. Um, that way the person and, and try and send them a private message if they do not leave um, a, a phone number or an email to reach them at please try and get that through them that way um, again please check your messages for quite frequently also a day can make a huge difference in what your pet look may look like you may have a say a long-haired poodle um, if your dog's gotten out it may end up not being a white beautiful poodle it may end up being dirty and gingy and mat it with burrs and all kinds of other things. Please also remember that animals are stressed when they get loose. Um, make big gigantic flyers or, 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 or signs for your yard. You know, whether you use tape and neon orange tape on the tarp with these tarps and you pinned it up or, or, or put it on your porch or whatever, um, you know, to, to let people know that your animal's missing or that you found an animal. Um, also, helpinglostpets.com is absolutely 100% free. They are not like Paul Boost who is trying to charge you for money to boast your post so that it gets out there more. I just, I feel like that's a scam. And also people, please do not post 
online or anywhere that you have a reward for your pet. All that is doing is encouraging people who do have your pet to hold on to your pet longer in hopes that you may increase the reward. Also, we'll also encourage people to chase after your pet, which since they're in fear and they're in survival mode, they will go farther away. So please don't do that. Um, once your animals return, you can reward, give that person the reward then. Don't make it public. Um, it's just, in, in my book, it's, it's not the smartest thing you can do. Um, also, photos of dogs' noses. Dogs' noses can change. Um, just a little tip. Somebody who may post a picture of this beautiful white dog with a black nose when it was younger, as the dog age, the dog's nose can turn pink. Um, you know, so it, it's called the snow snow nose yeah i know snow nose um try and say that 20 times real fast um it, it's why you cannot identify a dog by its nose unless your dog has very distinctive marks um like a big huge black patch here and the rest of the nose is pink and you've got photos of that most recent photos um don't don't go based on those things dogs love cats in communities there are a lot of people who are taking care of these colony cats that are feeding them that have provided shelters for them um you know they will share a meal with them um so even um in farms and feeding feral or outdoor cats please you know keep a look out if you see people that have um food bowls on their porches or whatever as you're walking around passing out flyers make sure to talk to them and let them know that, you know, because they are feeding cats, the dog is more likely to eat from that bowl and to keep a closer lookout. Also, um, in the winter time, bird feeders attract more than birds. Um, deer, squirrels, fox, and other wildlife will visit yards with bird feeders in search of food. The seeds and the nuts and the cakes of suet make an easy meal. A hungry dog or a cat will also search out these food sources. Map and visit homes with backyards and patio feeders in the area the dog went missing. I cannot tell you how um, helpful that can be, especially in the wintertime. Um, ask residents to let you know if they spot your pet or see paw prints in the snow or the mud around the, the, the bird feeders. Um, also, please remember that um, during... Uh, hunting season. Hunters can be very helpful. Um, I know it seems strange, but if your dog is lost in a rural, rural, oh good lord, a rural area, make an effort to alert hunters in the area that your dog is missing. Hunters are out in the in pre-dawn hours, and when and that's when your lost dog may be the most active. Putting flyers on hunters' vehicles parked along fields or woodlands, leave them a note asking a, for them to call you if they catch a glimpse of your dog or even catch them on a trail cam. These are the best things ever, trail cams. I love them. Um, cannot speak enough about them, how helpful they can be. Um, also, railroad tracks and poll times. Uh, when it's election time, people, you can use the polls to your benefits as passing out flyers. Also, dogs and cats will often um, follow train tracks, hiking trails, wooded or field, field edges, and power lines. Make a note of all possible routes where your dog, more so dogs than cats, uh, and map them. These paths are easily traveled and dogs can go long distances in a short time. These shortcuts can explain why two people claim they have seen your lost pet uh, around the same time, but miles apart. Okay, it is extremely important. Then you got your your roll time. Your pull. Bleh. I'm sorry. I'm really like trying to get this out there quickly because I know that we've already been like half an hour into this. Polls. Um, polls will be open all day, and large crowds are expected. If you are searching for a lost pet, ask if you can hand out flyers at the polling places. It is a great opportunity to get your pets photo out of lots and who live in the area. If they say no, off side of the property, um, away from the doors, you can put flyers on the car vehicles. That is so much allowed. Um, even at your local Kroger's or, or um, grocery store, things like that, where people park, you put that information down. Um, also, Halloween time is really important too. You can also pass out little um, 
you flyers into the kids um candy bags also um i just want to make this really important that please remember your pet will behave differently than one under stress and um while they're out they're in survival mode so you know um just don't don't take it personally okay um also i want to um make you understand too uh, let me find it real quick on my computer and i apologize very much uh, crap. i'm so sorry um I want to make sure I'm covering all my bases here. Um, so uh, ways to lure your cat back home too. Also, if you have a cat that has escaped out of your home, um, try to leave that window or um, door, garage door open at night. If you have other animals, try and put them up. When the house is quiet, your animal may come, try to come back in. There are ways to lure your cat back home if you know your cat was a, is in reasonable amount of distance from home. Um, like I said, one, leave your garage door open a crack. Cats um, really seem to prefer sneaking in a home that way and will sit on the interior step or scratch or meow. Um, also, um, appeal to their senses of smell. Um, so use a humane trap and when I, i'm talking about a humane trap i'm talking about the ones that are large enough to catch a raccoon a lot of people who do tnr work have these take smelly foods like i'm talking smelly foods like tuna fish warmed up and you know in a can warm it up and place it in the very back of the humane trap and place the humane trap very closely to the point of of where they exit it whether it's the door a window um wherever um and do that at night because when things quiet down cats are more likely to come out and investigate things you can also um put alongside articles of worn clothing a slept on pillowcase a used bath mat uh, a towel a vacuum yeah um you know so you get the idea here uh Use the food to lure them back. If you know your cat is still on your property, um, set up a feeding station, food, water, and try to maybe, you know, with the humane trap, you can always try and trap train them where you're putting the food on the outside of the trap with a stick holding the trap open and then slowly moving that food into the very back of the um, trap until you've got the food all the way in the back of the trap. The entire time the stick is still holding the door open so that when they step on the the, the trap um, sensor, which is a, a plate that they step on and it closes the door behind them. Um, once they're comfortable going inside, you can remove that stick. And when they go inside for their next feeding and they step on that, that mat that releases the door, um, you can have them. So cats are also drawn to comfort birding sounds uh humans normal voices speaking but again if your cat is stressed out and they're outside they are not going to come um and you know home sweet home um brew a pot of coffee and plan on for a sleepless night most cat owners report their cats returning home between dusk and dawn sleep on the ground floor to listen for any scratches or meows during the night or use a baby monitor to keep your ears open um i really hope that the information that i gave you today um can be very helpful um if i can help you any more or you have any questions um feel free to leave a comment below underneath this video but the biggest thing i think you could do to help people is to share this video the more it gets out there and the more people see it and the more people um understand animal behavior and just doing the right thing and holding animals for more than three days and 14 days and again if you get an animal and an owner doesn't want it back and you do find them 
get it in writing that they're surrendering the animal back to you. Um, this, this covers your butt legally and it also provides you that safety net so that if you um, do make the legal choice, which is yours after the animal surrendered or you haven't found an owner within a reasonable amount of time with reasonable effort trying to find the owner, you can rehome them or keep them as your own. So um, stay safe out there, be kind, and stand up for the right thing. And let's help people instead of hurt people. Peace, love, happiness, and pause out.